isn't actually any marching going on or parade movement. Instead, today is all about the extravagant outfits and, as you can see, stretching beyond your traditional bonnet. John Legend's performing here today. What do you think of that? I'm very excited. It's going to be right up there. And you're skating. You're going to see it all. Oh, wonderful. Today was just the announcement of her retirement, which will be in a year, Tamsin. She's calling this her victory lap year. Let's take Channel oh. 11. Oh. 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 Here we go. My ab muscles are awful. Well, I ended up dropping on the first try and not wanting to move. That was scary. Can I just stay in fetal position? We're, we're switching gears. You have the mic, I have the bagpipes. Let's see how this goes. Harder, harder. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> That's a good try. That is so, all right, we'll switch. I'm better at this than, than that, so. I will give you a dollar if you can tell me where the nearest payphone is. So we're gonna ride this off in the distance as we go. Okay, go for it. Here we go. Woo. <laughs> a little left. Okay, doing good. The nearest payphone? Or a payphone at all. I have no idea. I lost a dollar. <laughs> Do you want a dollar anyways? No. Okay, it's good. It's my vending machine I'm, money. Uh, all right. <laughs> the rain's coming down pretty hard. My mobile camera and I are getting pretty tired of getting wet, so let's go find some shelter. We're going back inside. Ah. Well, what you didn't see, the camera turned off. He sprinted away from me. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> inside are a lot of goodies, and I picked you out because I stalked you. No, not really. Not really. But you seem like a great guy, so I figured, why not? I'll give this to you. Ah, there's one. How do you text on this thing? Surrey, tell me where the nearest cell phone store is. Surrey. Have to sign out from the Sandcastle desk. So we are in Atlantic City, Hillary Whittier, Pix 11 Morning News. Thank you. I'm always Among the tears <laughs> and laughable moments that I have been on television continuously for over 50 years. <laughs> Barbara Walters announced her retirement plans on this morning's episode of The View. A year from now, I plan to retire. A graceful bow out after a career that spans decades and forever changed the way we view journalists today. I'm sure it's bittersweet for her. She totally is a, you know, an icon in journalism and in broadcasting. She's a pleasure to watch. She, she's got it all. Columbia professor and longtime international correspondent Ann Cooper talks about the legacy Walters leaves behind. Women were secretaries and helpers, and they were just going to get married and go home and have babies. I mean, that's the way they were viewed by, you know, a lot of the men who were in power at the networks and at newspapers. Um, so she somehow, you know, overcame that. When the living icon first arrived to NBC, working as a writer back in the 60s, then as on-air talent, she says one of her greatest accomplishments was transforming the title of on-air girl to the more appropriate one of co-host. After that, a slew of firsts seemed to travel Walters everywhere. First female co-host, first female anchor to rake in over a million dollars, and even first major anchor to get poked fun at on Saturday Night Live. And here on Gilda Ratner Way, we are reminded of the first moment that Barbara Walters really became a household name. After all, how could we forget the famous Barbara Wawa sketch? I'm Barbara Wawa, and tonight we'll be talking to an actual living legend. A trailblazing career that has arguably created more opportunities for women in the media than any other journalist of her time. Hillary Whittier, Pix11 News. Two hours of man-eating sharks swirling in tornadoes is the basic premise of Sharknado. For all of its wonder and bad dialogue glory, it's barely even raining. It's flooding here, and not the plumbing, the ocean. Sharknado sparked one of the biggest crazes in the social media world, specifically Twitter. With hashtag Sharknado taking a bite out of the number one trending topic as sci-fi premiered the epic movie that many say is so bad, it's good. I love making corny jokes, and especially with Sharknado, because it's really corny. It's tweeters like Jeremy that have helped change the way we watch TV, at least according to a new study by Nielsen. Revolutions start on Twitter. I mean, Twitter is a way to you know light a match and, and see what happens. Eric Everbaum is a longtime social media expert, president of Erico Communications, and publisher of a magazine dedicated to the world of Twitter. 
He sat down with us to talk about the Nielsen study and how its findings show that tweets have an influence to higher TV ratings. The fact that there's a direct correlation between ratings and what people are saying in all those social mediums, you know, it's also not surprising either. Uh, you're going to see more and more and more of that. But what is surprising is that it's taken about seven years for a study like this to come out since Twitter was first created. This is really one of the first studies that we've ever seen that uses statistical evidence to prove the direct correlation between TV broadcasting and social media. You know, everyone on Twitter is, of course, thinking hashtag awesome. Twitter execs certainly did their fair share of promoting the study, as you can see by this tweet. And all of this Twitter chatter has not only made Sharknado a cult classic, it has also changed the way Nielsen plans to document ratings. The company announced a new rating system will soon be released to include social media's impact. In Midtown, Hillary Whittier, PIX11 News. At this point, we've seen every rendition of the Harlem Shake imaginable. The Army version. Or how about the SeaWorld style? And sometimes, even reporters can get caught up in this storm. It's an internet epidemic, with the shake gaining 44 million views. Though here's something that hasn't been talked about much. Where did this crazed style of dance come from? Different, it's way different. Well, listen, I give props to them young people because if they can hype it up to another level, let them go for it. But before we Got shake it, it up, oh. we first sit down with Sandra Boyce, the 69-year-old Harlem native who is thought to be the original inspiration of the Harlem Shake. She says she'd dance at home and her son Al would take those moves and spice him up on the basketball court. Al started dancing and add a little bit more to it. He started, and I used to jump up. And then he'd do that dance when he'd jump up and throw his hands, and that's how the dance started. From these saved videos, it appears the dance was first seen in the 80s during Rucker Park's Entertainers Basketball Classic, according to the tournament founder. And that's him. Yeah, that's him. That's how he looked. Over time, it garnered the name Harlem Shake. Since I have zero dancing ability, I begged Sandra to teach me a little. Okay, I may be a lost cause, but it seems since the original moves brought on by Sandra and her son, who passed away in 2006, the dance has obviously morphed a bit, going from a sway and shimmy to, well, this. Hillary Whittier, Mix 11 News.